Doc Martens? Who would ever buy a pair of Doc Martens? Do I look like the kind of person that buy a pair of Doc Martens? Do I look like a high school girl who likes to listen to some underground alternative rock music because I'm just so different and so quirky and not like the other girls and I don't get along with other girls. I'd rather make friends with guys. Oh yes. <laughs> what is this intro? What's good everyone on YouTube? It's me again, back with another video. And yeah, don't mind that intro. I'm just really losing it in this quarantine. Hope you guys are safe out there. Um, so yeah, uh, today we happen to have Paradox Martins. And I never really thought I'd see myself ever buying a Paradox Martins. Um, I've always seen like the classic sort of boot with the yellow uh, stitchy on it. And for, for, for some reason, that's like forever ingrained in my mind as like a schoolgirl shoe or a schoolboy shoe, but mostly girls, because at least at like the high school I went to, quite a few people used to wear Doc Martens, and they're just kind of like ingrained in my head like that. So I never th thought I'd ever buy a pair of Doc Martens, but, uh, you know, brands can always change their aesthetics and brands can always do interesting collaborations, and it, this happens to be the case with uh, Doc Martens right now where um, they did a collaboration with a Japanese menswear brand called Nanamika. I hope I pronounced that correctly. And they seem to have this sort of um, more, I guess, like smart casual look to them. Um, not gonna lie, I don't really know too much about Nanamika, but like I saw these uh, Dot Martins and for some reason they really pulled me. Um, I, it's a weird look, it's very exaggerated, but I kind of like them, so I ended up pulling the trigger on them. And they happened to be on sale as well, so that was another reason why I pulled the trigger as well. And, you know, during the quarantine, you tend to make a lot of impulse decisions, but hey, we're gonna go with it anyway. So, um, yeah, I guess enough faffing around. Today we're gonna be talking about the uh, Nanamika times Doc Martens uh, Camberwell in the dark tan colorway. Um, so yeah, uh, with the intro out of the way, let's get into the box. So for this particular box, we've got this uh, initial sleeve, and on this sleeve we've got the Doc Martens Airwave logo with Nanamika written on the bottom as well, and made in England as well, so you know that price point going to be high because of it. And once you slide off the, the sleeve itself, we've just got a Doc Martens Airwave made in England uh, box, uh, made in England as well, in case you didn't see that. And then once we take the box lid off, if it comes off, there we go. We're first greeted with a shoe bag, and just in case you didn't know it was a shoe bag, we've got shoe bag written in big letters on the shoe bag. So, hmm, shoe bag, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And attached to uh, one of the shoes, I actually got a pair of black laces. Now, there's a really weird thing. I've seen on many websites that the dark tan color is supposed to come with uh, matching brown laces, but I didn't get these laces. I got black laces, and I actually ended up complaining online about it, and they sent an extra pair of white laces, which, yeah, you know what? I'll take an extra pair of white laces just because white laces tend to get dirty, so wouldn't mind having a fresh pair. And then the shoes were individually wrapped with this Doc Martin and Nanamika branded uh, paper. Hopefully that's coming up on camera. And the shoes are stuffed with pretty standard paper in the toe. So, pretty standard affair, I would say. And if we move to the box label, it's, it reads Camberwell. Um, that's the model name, uh, that's the name of this model, I guess. So, the retail price on these. The retail price on these were actually pretty high. Um, a lot of websites have them for a retail price of around like 400 Australian dollars. I didn't pay that. Um, they were just about, just under 25% off where I bought them from. So I ended up paying around 316 Australian dollars or something like that. Find the exact figure and put the conversion here. For 316, it's still a very expensive shoe, but I guess considering the made in England and the quality of the materials, because I actually do think the leather is quite nice on this shoe. Plus the fact that the Camberwell is actually a unique silhouette that's never been made before. Um, I actually thought it was not too bad, so I'm just trying to justify expensive purchases again. But yeah, uh, with the box out of the way, let's get into the shoes. And here we are. Hefty. The Doc Martens Nanamika Camberwell in the, in the dark tan colorway. So, 
Um, as I mentioned just before with the box, the Camberwell is actually a unique silhouette that's never been made before, and it was made specifically for this collaboration. Now, it is very possible that they start making more regular versions of this shoe, but as of right now, they haven't yet. And the Camberwell seems to be this sort of like, boaty kind of shoe. So, um, it's got like that typical stitching around the toe box where the two pieces of leather come together, and it's really emphasised. And I actually quite like the way uh, the toe box actually looks on this shoe. So predominantly on this upper, we've got this really nice dark tan um, leather. And this leather actually seems to be quite a nice quality. I'm not a e leather expert, but it seems to... It, it smells quite nice and it's got a really nice uh, shade to it. And actually when you scratch it, it has that sort of quality where it leaves marks, but then you can rub it away with your fingers. Uh, I'm not sure if that indicates uh, leather quality, but there you go. And the stock on the shoes itself, we've actually got a pair of white laces, which I actually think go extremely well with this brown colour, and especially with the, uh, I guess, uh, Goodyear welts that they've used on the edges. Instead of the typical yellow Doc Martin um, uh, welts colour that they usually use, they've used white stitching, and I actually think it looks much better because of it. I can't imagine this shoe with the yellow stitching, I probably would have never bought it. And then on the back, we've got this pretty emphasized pull tab that says Air, Air Wave or Air whatever, and with bouncing sole. So I think this is uh, sort of alluding to the midsole and outsole itself. And then the inside of the shoe is lined with uh, sort of like a dark blue navy leather. And we've got Dark Martin's Air Wave made in England for Nanamika. So, you know, got to really emphasize the made in England part. And then moving down to the midsole, which is probably one of the most interesting things they've done. We've got this intensely serrated, um, I guess like rubber oil midsole. It's the typical like proprietary Doc Martin compound that they use. And in this iteration, it's really thick and really emphasized with the sort of sawtooth outsole. Um, it actually... Honestly, like, I don't know why, when I see this, like, it kind of reminds me of Rick Owens, but like, if Rick Owens was like turned to 100. And then if we look on the outsole, the outsole traction itself is like pretty typical, but with the added change of the ribbing that we have on the shoe. And then in the middle of the outsole, we've actually got the Doc Martens, um, I guess, what this thing is made of, because it's oil, fat, acid, petrol, alkaline, and resistant, or something like that. And again, we've got Made in England on the bottom as well. So, that pretty much covers the main features of this particular shoe. Now, in terms of sizing, I had heard from like a couple of places that they fit really big. Um, I heard that you could go a full size down in this shoe. I didn't have this option, I only went down half a size. And, <coughs> geez. I will say, going down half a size seems to be pretty good. I think in a pinch I could have gone a full size down, but at the same time, Leather shoes, you don't really want your toe right at the front of the shoe. So I would say, um, honestly, if you can, uh, definitely go half a size down in this shoe. Now, I don't know if they made half, half sizes, so you may want to just check if you can go full size down. But they definitely fit big, so I would say, for most people, go down half a size in this shoe. So I'm typically a US 9.5 in most of my sneakers. Um, I bought these in a US 9, and they fit me great. Now. In terms of comfort, um, just trying them on around the house and like just on the wooden floors and stuff, um, the Doc Martin compound sole that they use is actually quite soft. It's not bouncy in any way, but like it's got this nice shock absorption to it. And the, the intense ribbing on this shoe is actually, um, doesn't seem to affect how the shoe feels underfoot that much. You sort of notice it a little more in the toe, but overall it still feels pretty nice to walk in. I will say this though, um, this thick rubber sole along with um, the ribbing as well adds a tremendous amount of weight to this shoe I can honestly say this shoe weighs about the same as a pair of six inch tins but it's a low top so it's extremely heavy and bottom loaded in this shoe so that's something that you sort of just need to get used to I guess the upper itself the leather actually creases quite nicely um, I already found that like the toe box doesn't seem to cut into my foot that much and um, it's not exactly breathable but that's typical of leather shoes but the lockdown itself is actually quite nice as well. You can tie up the shoe and it doesn't seem to slide that much. So overall, for a leather kind of like style boot shoe thing, um, I would say this is actually really comfortable. Now I get into the part of the video where I talk about my opinions on this shoe. 
And like, like I said, during this quarantine, um, there are probably a lot of impulse decisions that are going to be made and this might possibly go down as one of them. But as it stands right now, I actually think that the shoe itself is um, really kind of like classy and stylish, uh, stylish in my opinion. Now, the sticking point for me when I first opened the box is I didn't realize how thick the uh, sawtooth sole actually was going to be. Um, on photos, it seemed to be a little less emphasized, but in person, it's definitely uh, quite a thick, uh, thick boy shoe. But I thought to myself, if I, if I am going to wear this quite a lot, I feel like this shoe will wear down pretty quickly. Usually, like, anything with, like, sawtooths will usually wear down pretty fast once it reaches, like, a flat point, and then it'll be fine afterwards. So I'm thinking after wear, this shoe will just look pretty normal. And I think once it looks pretty normal, I think this is a really uh, nice shoe for my collection, just because I don't really have any leather shoes in, in my collection. And I think this is a nice uh, mix between almost like classy but still like street because I'm not trying to be too formal out here honestly. And I think this is quite a statement piece honestly. It's subtle but at the same time it's very loud in its sort of silhouette. So overall I would just say that I'm quite excited to wear these you know once the quarantine's over. And um, yeah, I like it. It's good. And with that, we've come to the end of another video. So, I'd love to hear what you guys think of the Nanamika X um, Doc Martin um, Campbell Welts in this dark tan colorway. And out of the two colorways that released, uh, which were your favorites? Um, so, obviously for me, I bought the dark tan. And then there was a black colorway, which is inoffensive, but I just think the brown is a little more special. But I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. So, like, comment, subscribe, leave a comment in the comment section down below. And if you're into more sneakers, vlogs, dance, that sort of thing, consider subscribing to the channel. Um, time for the on feet, and I'll catch you guys in another video. You wanna know how heavy these are? Watch this.